You know, mm. recently on the internet, I've seen a lot of people complaining about something called cultural Marxism. Uh, from the sounds of things, it's a really big deal. I have some trouble understanding what they mean, though. When I look the phrase up on Wikipedia, it redirects to a subheading in an article about the Frankfurt School and calls it a conspiracy theory about Marxists trying to destroy Western culture. But maybe we shouldn't trust Wikipedia. I mean, it's an online encyclopedia that anyone can edit, and we can't trust anyone. Some of them might be cultural Marxists trying to deny their conspiracy. Let's take to YouTube.com to discover what's really going on. Of course, there is always the slight possibility that the internet is full of crazy people. And I recorded this video at the end of the rest of the stuff that I'm about to show you. So I actually know, yeah, that is actually the case. Uh, but regardless, maybe we can have some fun and learn something anyway. So, grab yourself a mug of your favourite substance, unlock all the cells in your high-risk mind prison, and have yourself a laugh riot. Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, here's our first video, and that's a really unfortunate first frame. I better hit play before I prejudge him. What is a cultural Marxist? <laughs> <laughs> that's something I do for a joke! That's something I did! I did that! <laughs> In a video! Oh my god! Is this a parody? Oh, it's not. He means it. Oh no, this is real. Rocking Mr. E. <laughs> Marx is cited as one of the major founders of the social sciences. And anyone that knows anything about modern academia is aware that this field of study is the bedrock for the theories presented by the modern left, like feminist theory, postmodernism, and gender studies. Wait, so feminism, gender studies, and postmodernism are all Marxist too? Everything this guy doesn't like, agree with, or understand is all manufactured by one guy. How convenient. There are still people out there that believe in Western values. And the entire aim of cultural Marxism is to soften this up enough to transform the culture from the inside. So it's essential that the opposition is either ridiculed or discredited. So in other words, criticizing things has made them change. Uh, to the cultural Marxist, Anyone who believes that human beings are different, or that these differences are not always associated with social constructs, is a bigot, and so will very quickly be vindictively labelled a racist, sexist, rape apologist. What is that? What's that about? or any other term that aligns with PC shaming language. No, but political correctness upsets me! So please stop, people are trying to shame me into not saying things that sound racist. The difference between liberalism and Marxism is very clear given that cultural Marxists are against free speech and anti-free market. But wait a second. Rocking Mr... <laughs> Rocking... <laughs> Sorry, it's a terrible... Rocking Mr. E has contradicted himself? in the span of about 30 seconds, because firstly he talks about how people will call you a bunch of names if you say something they don't like, and then he says they're anti-free speech. But the problem is criticising someone for something they've said isn't trying to take away their free speech. That is free speech. Criticism is free speech. The instant anyone stops defending their argument and starts complaining about their right to have it, Something's gone horribly wrong. I just want to point that out. There's a bird chirping outside and it's going to ruin all the audio for this section, but I'm going to leave it in anyway because I just don't give a shit. STOP IT! What's that? You're criticizing what I'm saying? Well, you must be trying to take away my freedom of s speech! Yeah, that's... that's what it is! Ugh. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. Let's check out what this guy, who modestly calls himself the Golden One, has to say. <laughs> I, I can't tell if half of these are parodies anymore. Is this all an elaborate joke at my expense? So, for me, I never w went with a mindset that I will get a fucking medal either way, no matter what I do. Because for me, I just wanted to win, like... But you know, a lot of other guys, the same beta's who are now complaining about this and that, they were the ones who, like, 
oh, I did my best, I got a medal. And when you go with that mindset, with that cultural Marxist mindset that everyone is so fucking entitled, keep that word on your mind, true friends, entitled, that you're entitled to get the exact fucking same thing as the winner, the guy who has trained his fucking ass off and, you know, competed the hardest, struggled the hardest, went the hardest. When you go with that mindset, and hey ho, both guys are in their 20s, going into the gym, both wanna he have... He trails off boys. into talking about a completely different topic here, but I'm pretty sure what he's talking about, at least in this part, is uh, that cultural Marxists are the sort of people who take part in the same competitions as quote-unquote normal people, and then at the end demand the same prize as the people who win. Wow, these cultural Marxists sound like total dicks. That's not what Marxism is about. Marx wrote about only asking for a smaller, lesser prize made of silver or bronze, not the same as the winner. That's barbaric! The golden one looks like someone in control of himself. Although granted, he doesn't seem to know how to button a shirt and needs to hang a Swedish flag up to make sure he remembers what country he's in, but otherwise he seems pretty compass mentis. Isn't winning its own reward? Why is he so afraid of having his prizes devalued? The golden one protects his country by filming himself standing against scenic backgrounds, lifting weights set to power metal, and ranting about homosexual propaganda. So my official stance is like, the, the gay pride community, gay propaganda, no, Putin is absolutely right, that has nothing to do in the street. I don't know man, I think you should stay away from the carbs. <laughs> Okay, in my opinion, that's the funniest joke in this video. It's downhill from here. Ugh, why can't gay people just be normal? Why do they have to have pride in who they are? Being proud of yourself is disgusting, which is why I am. So are the cultural Marxists turning people gay with gay propaganda and gay pride? Or are the gays an unrelated social parasite? I don't think he approves of the gay, the whole gay community being hijacked by extreme leftist betas who are trying to use that, use a sexuality as a sledgehammer against the family. What? But, but, how did he know? How, who told him? Oh, I'll get you yet, the family! Especially you, Kevin, you smug little bastard! This guy is far too close to the truth, so I'm obviously gonna have to move on to another video. Um, how about this one? Hey, folks. This video is by my good friend Jimmy Skullman, or whatever his name is. Uh, oh yeah, that's his name! He's Davis Aruni. At least, according to his fucking website! Okay, this video is called Corruption and Cultural Marxists, but it's... It starts off as a rant about the inaccuracy of Star Trek. But the trite morality plays that you find on Saturday morning cartoons in Star Trek, just, they, they never run through for me. Uh, just, it's not been... I, d I don't buy it. My goodness, Star Trek's plot is unbelievable. It's like some kind of fiction show. You know, you can say a lot of things about Davis, but he's definitely gotten more honest about the content of his videos over time. For a guy who doesn't think Star Trek is relevant to anything or realistic, he sure talks about it a lot and hasn't moved on in about three years. With the feudal lords. Uh, f the feudal lords, and just read any fantasy for this. There's always the... Uh, <laughs> of course! Feudal lord, feudal lord who protects his That's why he didn't want to say that Star Trek was just fiction, so it was obviously fake. Because he later cites fucking... fucking storybooks as proof of how the world should be. Carter was on were largely responsible people, for the most part, that took care of their society. I'm going to have to go back and watch the rest of that, I missed it. Is that a firing range target full of BB gun holes? But, my god, Davis, your aim is terrible! Rome, back then, you had, you had responsible citizens that were slave owners, but they treated their slaves fairly well for the most part. Um, quite frankly, life was difficult back then, so... Gotta roll the dice. Allow me to begin my video about how I think society should be by defending slavery. That's certainly the most interesting justification of slavery I've ever seen. Though I have no idea what it has to do with cultural Marxism, considering ancient Rome was around thousands of years before Marx was born. Three minutes in, and all the guys talked about is how slavery can be great, guys, and Star Trek. This guy has his priorities straight. 
He talks briefly about how society was just fine in the 50s. Productive people were in control. Uh, business owners, property holders, wealthy people that invested in their businesses were in control. And all the people without any control, the, the, the working schlubs, they were treated well. <laughs> they didn't have a government watchdog with its nose up their ass constantly. Of course, the guy fucking forgot about that whole McCarthyism thing. No, society was fine and no one's life or career was ruined by government meddling back then. No, things fell apart when the welfare, welfare queens. queens came along. You have those that do absolutely nothing all day. In fact, probably on aggregate, damage things at the end of each day and collect welfare with the- My goodness, uh, not welfare. Quite frankly, we live in a dystopian novel. Just look around you. Davis would know because he wrote a dystopian novel. And by novel, I mean Fallout fanfiction with the serial numbers filed off. No, seriously, he changed some names and sold this shit for money. So the guy who makes videos about non-contributive societal parasites, major contribution to literature, is a book based on concepts he stole entirely from a pre-existing setting. Is Davis Arini a cultural Marxist or a different parasite? He doesn't explain which. These people, these, these rich kids, are looking for something to do so they all find a cause to fight for. A cause they largely manufacture themselves, but then start selling to people. Nobody knows there's a problem until they, they invent this cure for a nonsensical problem. Probably toss psychiatrists under there too. Also, psychiatrists are in on it too, apparently. Just add them to the list at this point. Everyone you don't like or agree with is probably in on a conspiracy to destroy the world. That's basically the tagline of the Dark Enlightenment. Uh, Marxism, which is allegedly supposed to be protecting the, the lower classes, the proletariat, you know, uh, strength to the people. That's exactly what Marx wrote. That's exactly it, he remembered it word for word. I'm surprised because it's in one of his obscure novels, the one based on Skyrim. Uh, simply look at feminism. Women are more miserable today than they were 50 years ago. That's because you weren't around then, but carry on. There's a, uh, a study they've been doing for at least 50 years in the United States, every year checking the general happiness of people, the longevity. Um, name escapes me right now, but I'll link to it down below. And yes, women have been getting progressively less happy thanks to feminism. Davis apparently eventually remembered what he was talking about because he does link to a paper in the comments. Unfortunately, the paper doesn't actually exist. Uh, it links to a dead page. But if you Google search the article name, you do get to a paper, so I'm not going to fault him for this. Although I am, it's his fault. Of course, despite him using this study to hold feminism to task for the destruction of women's happiness, the study doesn't even mention feminism at all. Uh, hit control F and type the word of feminism in. Like, that's how easy it is to verify the, the validity of his comments. You don't even have to fucking read it. 50 years ago, they could choose whether or not they wanted to work or stay at home. Now they all have to work. Wait, so women have to work and have no choice anymore, but are also choosing to be welfare queens? Is Schrodinger's cat a welfare queen? They're like those immigrants who come into our country, take all of our jobs, but are also lazy and just claim benefits. You know, in the words of the greatest philosopher of all time, Fried Rice Nitsushi, the best way to harm a cause is to defend it with faulty arguments. When you defend your ideas really badly, you make them look even stupider than they first appeared. Aruni makes fun of himself better than I could. He's beaten me at making him look bad. Uh -huh. I might as well move on to another video. Um, how about this strapping young Daniel Radcliffe impersonator? Fellow British youth, who is responsible for the ongoing attempt to eradicate the British culture and the British- British youth? I love the British youth. I used to be a British youth until time moved in. Coming over here, giving me chronic skin problems. Send it back. I'm kidding. This isn't a real British youth. He's a puppet for the BNP youth, an offshoot of the literal British Nazi party. These, I hesitate to say gentlemen, seem to know a lot about the problems plaguing Britain. They have a huge and contradictory list. And in the bastardization, the genuine diversity. For the ever-growing debt 
owned by Britain. Austerity measures. For unsustainable housing projects. Islam. The uncontrolled mass immigration. Dumbing down of our education system. For giving away our independence to the European Union. Dumbing down of Islam. By sending 12.8 billion abroad. I'll start helping people sign this austerity. Give us a spot of who's to blame. Yeah. Mass immigration. Yeah! And on top of that, there's a bunch of opportunistic, hate-mongering fascists trying to garner sympathy with garbage propaganda videos. Oh, I'll show them. When I make my video about how women called Nancy are taking over the world by not having sex with me when I ask them nicely, and hanging out with Kevin, I'll put the Game of Thrones theme over it. That'll convince them! <laughs> But among their enemies are, you guessed it, the cultural Marxists who infest our teaching establishment. So Marxism is coming to get us, along with capitalist consumerism, which is kind of a weirdly contradictory thing if you think about it. The capitalists that want to make us wage slaves as well as brainwashed consumers. The heartless Zionists. <laughs> talking about the Jews! I've shot my load now. I don't need to talk about them anymore, because they did it. They brought the Jews up. I'm done. I'm stopping the video. I don't need to watch anymore. It's over. Okay, it's probably mean to even compare anyone else in this video to the BNP, just because they target the same vague, contradictory straw men. The militant homosexuals who push for gay marriage and gay adoption in order to destroy the traditional family unit. Who are trying to use that, use a sexuality as a sledgehammer against the family. The ongoing attempt to eradicate the British culture and the British identity. And the entire aim of cultural Marxism is to soften this up enough to transform the culture from the inside. The heartless Zionists, whose interests are foreign interests. And let's not forget the Jews. But it doesn't help that the phrase was literally pioneered by the Nazis. Oh yeah, did I not mention that? <laughs> Back in the 30s it was Kultur Bolshevismus, or Cultural Bolshevism. It also functioned as an anti-Semitic slur because, since Marx was ancestrally Jewish, it was easy back then to denounce Marxist ideas as part of a Jewish plot. The phrase became popular again quite recently after Anders Breivik used it in his manifesto. You know that guy? Incidentally, the Cultural Marxism page on Metapedia, Wikipedia for white supremacists, used to point out the link between the modern phrase and its original Nazi origins, but even they are slightly uncomfortable with being linked to the literal Nazis, so the phrase has since been edited out of the article. Now, I can predict what my critics are going to say already. You didn't take these people seriously, you just laughed openly at their ideas and poked holes in their application of studies. I tend to only apply reason to people who are using it themselves. When someone makes a claim like this, but it was the Soviets that came out on top by convincing the Allies to go to war against the Nazis. You really have to wonder if they give a shit about any historical truth at all, considering that the English were at war with Germany years before Stalin even joined the Allies. And there's no evidence of the Soviets convincing the Allies to go to war. The Allies basically made their own mind up. There was this guy called Churchill who, you know, made a speech about, you know, was his mind being controlled by Stalin? Was Churchill a Mancurian candidate? Or is it Manchurian? I haven't actually seen that film. Pop culture, yeah. Wait, but is pop culture part of a conspir- Forget it, okay. So when someone rants about cultural Marxism as if it were real, yet mandates themselves to rewrite history to suit their ends by baselessly claiming the Soviets manipulated the Allies into war, for example, it seems pretty clear that reason hasn't factored into these people's thoughts for a long time, so why capitulate to the idea that they are by taking them seriously? Incidentally, someone pointed out the baselessness of this claim in the comments section. Rocking Mr. E, a rational person, apparently, surely responded by presenting their evidence or changing their mind in accordance with a lack of it. No! You're a revisionist liar. You come across as a typical pinko that perpetuates communist lies. And just to solidify the bizarre link between the cultural Marxist conspiracy theory and anti-Semitism, one of Rocking Mystery's fans responded to this comment chain by declaring they think the Jews themselves tricked the Allies into the war. I think the Allies were tricked by the international Jews. Clearly, Hitler was the lesser of two evils. But don't worry, I'm sure they're literally the only fucked up person leaving a comment on a video about cultural Marxism. Just kidding! There's so fucking many! Let's go on a journey of discovery! Away!
Leftists are despicable scum and must be mercilessly destroyed. Cultural Marxists abound in the northeastern U.S. as well as California. In the south where I live, we actively fight it by drowning it in Christianity. Smiley face. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching us to war against cultural Marxism. Nationalism is the answer to this cancer. Well, at least it's catchy and right. Furthermore, it only ignores fundamental Marxist plots such as the fluoridation of water. Marxism is the only ideology that calls for genocide in the name of science. Well, I can think of one. Nazism. That is a filthy kosher lie. <laughs> no national socialist leader ever called for genocide against anyone. If you actually took the time to study the political theories of the Fuhrer... So the Holocaust never happened? Of course it didn't happen, even the Red Cross admits this. Modern forensic science has proven that these gas chambers are a hoax that were built by the Soviet KGB, which was 93% Jewish. No Jews were murdered during the Hala hoax. It was all a ploy to steal the Palestinians' land and create the terrorist state of Israel. No, I'm a fascist. I just like SS uniforms. I didn't know what cultural Marxism was until hashtag Gamergate happened. <laughs> so in conclusion, cultural Marxism roughly means, help me. The world is scary, and I don't understand, except when it means the Holocaust never happened, even though I wish it did. So if you hear someone saying cultural Marxism, I recommend you run away from them and report them to your local secret KGB informant that totally exists. I'm just kidding, there isn't a Marxist conspiracy to destroy the West. No, really, there isn't. I was going to jokingly imply I was in on the conspiracy at the end of this video, like have it slowly zoom in on me in black and white, and I start breathing really heavily, like, oh, he knows something, he, he's not telling us. But half the people watching this video probably really think there is an actual conspiracy. So implying even for a joke that I'm in on it puts me in a very bad position. So I cannot make that joke, so I won't. How's that for freedom of speech being repressed? Fucking subtlety is just wasted on white people. Luckily, we're gonna kill them all. Um. Ah, stop recording. Great. Great. Yeah, fuck. That was the best take I did of that, and it's gone. Fuck you. Fuck it up. Shut. God. Fuck! I'd like to say a very special thanks to Heshti, if that's how you pronounce your name, and also if you want me mentioning your name in a video where I basically draw the aggro of a lot of very weird people. Uh, sorry for you know the association, but I have to say thank you very much. Um, you've allowed me to add to my budget and do things such as uh, throw popcorn all over myself, which I previously couldn't afford to do, and also shave and afford a nice moisturizer to shave with because I swim every morning and when you shave and you get chlorine in your face it does very bad things to you. Go, 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 go. I don't, I'm not going to push you off me because that would be mean. I'm not going to pick you up because then the camera would know how I pick cats up and I probably do it wrong. I have never checked. So I'm going to make you jump off so I don't embarrass myself. Which of course means if you decide to sit down again that I can't stop you. Great. That's just great.